it's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer and we are back doing budget own label supermarket beer. This time it's Lidl. These are all of the beers that are available from Lidl. We got Excelsior Lager, £2.79 for four cans. We got the St. Bertin imported premium lager. That's coming in. It's 4% ABV. That's £5 for 2468, 10 bottles. £1.49 for the Italian style lager, £1.49 for the other Italian style lager, one being Peroni, one being Bira Moretti, and then you've got the Pearl and Backer Pills, £1.49, cracking German pills are there, and then you've got the kind of in between beer. Uh, this is 4.8% ABV, and it's Lidl's, Lidl's Gallaru premium lager beer 4.8 percent and that's coming in at four pound 80 a pack so 70 pence a can for the excelsior um, i was going to start there do you know i think i am going to start there because well i quite like the little french stumpies i think the quality of the little french stumpies is okay let's get the excelsior out let's start with that one the uh, reason why we're doing this is because there's probably still some people out there that still haven't decided to kind of venture into the world of Lidl or Aldi. If they have, if they have decided to venture into Lidl and Aldi, then perhaps, because you can still buy own brand, or not own brand, but you can still buy some of the big brands there. Perhaps they're buying some of the bigger brands that are in Lidl and Aldi. You get your kind of, your Stella Artois, you get some of your brew dogs in, in some of these big places. Uh, I've seen Cronenberg in these, in these German supermarkets. But what I want to shine a light on today is their own beer, their own branded beer. Because I've been drinking this stuff for years. When I first bought this house 24 years ago, 23 years ago, I literally couldn't afford next to nothing back then. I was so skint when I first bought this house 23 years ago that I was forced to buy Lidl's Excelsior Lager. It looks a little bit like Foster's, that same kind of imagery as, as Foster's. It's a 500 milliliter can. The beer comes in at 4% ABV. It used to cost me £2 23 years ago. So the fact that in 23 years it's only gone up by 79 pence, that makes it about 70 pence a can. It's absolutely fantastic, I think. For the price, of course. Three finger, white head, good levels of carbonation on the beer. It's a clear lager. All of these lagers have been at my fridge about 10 minutes. I just want to let them warm up a little bit just to experience a little bit more of that flavour. You can serve it ice cold if you want. I like my beer a little bit warmer. Right, so let's get straight into this one. Let's get the aroma. A little bit of sweetness coming through. Sweet kind of grainy malts. Maybe some kind of sucrose, maybe some like a glucose or something, maybe. Little hoppy, little spicy, peppery. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. <clears throat> It's exactly how I remember it. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's bag in basement. But I mean, even as a 20 year old when I bought this place, I'm just going back from my own personal experience buying this beer. I used to buy it every week. It always went in my trolley. It's all I could afford. 
it's one of them beers you kind of like you just suck it up you know you just suck it up you get on with it you skint um yeah having a little bit of beer as a bit of a treat on a I used to drink it on a Thursday night. It's never ever going to be the best beer in the world. But at the time, and right now, it's wet, it's cold, and it serves a purpose. It's just started to rain. <laughs> right, okay. That one, done and dusted. I think you get the message with this. It serves a purpose. Now I'm going to move on to this French lager. These beers... Um, now this was, as I mentioned earlier, £5. I'm going to grab two of these. £5 for a pack of 10. We should be able to do the maths, really. Is that... 50 pence a bottle. It is, isn't it? 50 pence a bottle, 250 millilitres, 4% ABV. It's got little on the back, so it's been brewed for little, um, bottled in France. Everybody, if you're a beer drinker, you will understand these little French stubbies. They've been around forever, haven't they? I used to know a bloke when Safeway was back open. Green glass bottle, by the way. Hope it's not too skunky. I think the cardboard packaging will save it a little bit from the skunkiness. But I used to know a... Uh, a bloke who used to drink, buy these in Safeway. He always used to buy a pack of stubbies, French stubbies in Safeway. And again, it was one of those situations he just used to crack onto it. So 500 mil then, because these are 250 mil bottles, that works out at a pound. One pound per 500 mil, just less than a pint. So 500 mil Excelsior, 70 pence a can. Two French stubby bottles making up the same 500 mil, they're 250 milliliter. One pound for a 500 mil. But to be honest with you already, I'm looking at this Excelsior and I'm thinking it looks better. The, the foam on the head looks a bit kind of like it wants to fall away on the French stubby. The carbonation's large. Um, the smaller the bubble, the better the beer. That was an old... An old brewer once told me that. So large bubbles in this glass of beer. This doesn't look really appetising, does it? it? It's a bit kind of dull looking. I've never had it before, this particular French lager, this St. Bertin oh. aroma. Mm, it smells a bit... It certainly doesn't smell any better than the Excelsior. A little bit spicy, peppery, a little bit sweet. Let's dive in. Cheers. Oh, um, oh. There's a little bit of more, there's a little bit more of a malt quality coming through. I wouldn't be surprised at all if this was an old malt lager, but it's tinny and metallic. Oh, it's really kind of like, as soon as you put the beer in your mouth, you hit with a metallic metal kind of like, like there's a half a bag of copper nails in the bottom of the glass here, really metallic initial flavour. Then the malt comes through. And then you go back to that kind of metallic taste. I really don't like this. Oh, no. And there's, a, there's like a hop astringency as well. A real hop astringency coming through. A real kind of... 
like like bitter hops with that metal taste, that metallic taste with just some some bittering hops in there. It's, it's quite aggressive, quite aggressive. It's not well brewed to be honest. Straight away, I'm going to say I prefer the Excelsior. It's cheaper by thirty pence per five hundred milliliters. I'm going to put that down. Right, let's move on to the Galaru then. Um, now, Galaru immediately kind of sounds French to me as well. Now, this is a jump in ABV. This is a jump. This is probably actually looking at this. This is their, probably their Stellar Artois clone, isn't it? Looks a little bit like Stellar Artois. It's got that kind of golden red white writing. 4.8% ABV, 500 milliliter can, produced for Lidl. Where is it brewed? Do we know? Doesn't say where it's brewed. Oh well, I mean, I'm sure you guys, you lovely, knowledgeable people out there are going to let me know in the comments box. Here we go then. We got a three finger white head on this one. Again, large carbonation. Going back, going back to the Excelsior Lager. The, the, look at the carbonation difference. Look at the way that Excelsior is lovely, small carbonation. It really is, if you're looking to kind of understand beer, learn about beer and, 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 and almost kind of like if you want to look at a beer um, and, and almost kind of like see through the beer and work out if it's going to be good or bad. The very first indication is very small carbonation, very small carbonation. The beer is generally going to be good. When you see kind of rough, large bubbles rising up a glass like this, I never ever see, I've never ever had a beer with this large bubbly carbonation that has actually been fantastic. It's always a sign that the beer is, it's a bit rough around the edges, so to speak. This was £4.80 uh, for four cans, £1.20 £1 a can. So we're jumping up in price. We're jumping up in ABV, 4.8, but we're also jumping up in price. You've got to start hoping that by paying more money, you're going to hope you're going to get a little bit better quality beer out there, aren't you? One finger, white head, good levels of large carbonation, and it's a straw-coloured lager. Let's get the aroma. Again, Again, at the moment, the Excelsior Lager is winning. This, this is just kind of, it's a little bit farty, it's a little bit. A little bit musty and kind of like, like a fat that's been left under the quilt for 20 minutes, like musty old farts. Not much at in the way of kind of light biscuity aromas, not much in the way of kind of like spicy peppery hops. Looks like Stella, designed on Stella, meant to be a fake Stella. Let's see if it tastes like Stella. <laughs> British Stella anyway. Uh, it actually tastes better than it smells. That's not too bad. 
that's not too bad. £1.20 a can, 4.8% ABV. A little bit of malt, a little bit of bitterness on the back end. I'm going to use the word smooth. It's, it's, it's a clean, drinkable, cheap, call it if you like, premium strength lager. It's not too bad. It's much better than those French stubbies there. They, that was almost kind of beyond terrible, that one. Um, yeah, this is okay. This is okay. Five hundred ml can. Two liters of beer for four pound eighty. Yeah, that's a typical chuck it in the trolley, drink it on a Friday night beer. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That. Right, so now we're going to move on to the kind of like the, these are your kind of your premium little bottled beers. One from Germany, well they're all, they're all from Germany really aren't they, they're, they're from Lidl. Um, but two have been designed on Italian lager, uh, Bira Moretti and Bira Peroni, uh, but this is called Bira Italiana Lager. If you want to see a comparison between Peroni and this. I did it about a month or so ago, so have a look at the video. It's our, it's in our YouTube kind of uploads. Have a look through it. Uh, five percent ABV, five hundred ml bottle, green glass bottle, and then there's your kind of hop on the top as a bottle cap, which that looks quite similar to the Aldi one. Here we go then. So for premium beer, I've gone with a nice kind of German style beer jug. Half an arm's distance, pouring the beer as quickly as I did. And there's a little bit of skunkiness coming through. There's a little bit of skunkiness, a little bit of... That's that green glass bottle. And what happens is the hops get, get affected by the light. It gets through that green glass and it kind of... It's, a, it, we call it, it's called light strike. Um, we can call it hop strike. Uh, I call it like... The effect is a skunkiness. You're not really getting the incredible hops that you want to get in the aroma. You're getting more of like, I always say, it's like the back of a skunk's backside. But people say, no, it's like that other stuff that you roll up in a cigarette. <laughs> smells okay, though. You, you could definitely get the aroma of a, a jumping quality, a definite jumping quality over... The other beers. Um, this is definitely something a, a level above, if you like. Uh, the ABV on the beer is five percent. So this is fake Peroni from Lidl. Wow! Go awesome. It's drinkable and refreshing, but it, this one, this particular batch, I've had this before and it didn't taste like this. Um, this is skunky. This is really skunky. Oh. That is really organic, really organic skunky. Oh, um... Getting to this stage in the review, I feel like um, I've been a bit, <laughs> it's not gone the way of little, if you like, in terms of their lager. It's not a great showcase of their lager at the moment. 
didn't like the St. Burton. I thought the Galaroo was kind of like, yeah, it's okay, it's drinkable. And the Excelsior so far is the kind of winner. The Excelsior is the winner. This, yeah. I suppose if you like a Peroni, if you like Peroni, you will probably like this. But because this is coming from a discount supermarket, a German discount supermarket, the, the problem you have is that you're going to get different variations in the batches. Let's say, for argument's sake, you watch this video in six months' time. Let's say it's May 2024 and you're watching this video. It's a hot day. You want to buy some lager. The chances are you're going to go into Lidl and pick these beers up. And they could be good. They could be good. There's such a variation. I drank these beers in the summer doing beer battles and they've been good. I did just a month ago, Bira Italiana versus Peroni. And I think the Bira Italiana come out on top. It won. And I think I liked it. I enjoyed it. But roll forward a month, different batch of beer. Not really enjoying this. It's clean. It's drinkable. It's carbonated. It's refreshing. But it's a bit too spiky. It's a bit too kind of like the the skunkiness in the hops is far too high in this particular batch. It, it's such a shame. But on the other hand, I wasn't to know this. I'm just picking up bottles and I, you know, rolling the dice like you would when you pick up these beers, and it's a batch by batch thing. Maybe the beer was stored outside in the sunlight. Maybe it was left outside the warehouse for half an hour in the sunlight. And the sun attacked it and, you know, damaged it. Okay. Beer beyond the 4.6% ABV. Uh, this is a clear clone, if you like. Rip off, if you like, of Bira Moretti in Italy. Same brown bottle. Oh, these bottles, by the way, are £1.49. I've mentioned that, haven't I? £1.49. So being in a brown bottle, the brown bottle will not, the light won't penetrate the brown bottle as much or nowhere near as much as a green glass bottle. And there's no, that same half arm distance, there's no skunkiness coming through at all here. Um, large, large carbonation though. <laughs> Large carbonation again on this beer. One to two finger white head. Uh, straw coloured lager. Let's get the aroma. That smells much better. Much better aroma on this beer. Yeah, it's pretty good now. Let's dive in. Cheers. Oh, talk about the aroma. A bit light, crispy, kind of light malt character coming through with a little bit of a hoppiness, a bitter hopper, bitter hoppy aroma on the end. Ah yeah, much more like it. Much more like it. Now this is what I was expecting from a lot of these little beers. Um, Clean, soft, lovely water quality, lovely soft water to this. Mm. This is nice, this is good. A little bit of sweetness coming through. 
nowhere near as harsh, nowhere near as kind of that kind of like real astringent hoppiness that was coming through from the Bira Italiana. This is this is much more of a of a soft landing, if you like, much more of a, a rounded taste, much more of an inviting taste. It's one of these beers that it's never too far from your lips. You're always kind of sipping away at it. Yeah, that's all right, that. I like that. Soft, fluffy, if you like, very drinkable, very refreshing. All malt lager, nicely carbonated, little bit of bitterness on the back end, really good balance to it. So far, this is a clear, clear winner. This is what I was expecting all along. Now, this beer, if you've been a little shopper, and you're a little shopper that, you know, like a little bit of quality in life, then this Perlenbacher, Perlenbacher Premium Pills, 4.8% ABV, 500ml. This is Lidl's flagship lager. This is the beer that they've had this on the shelf just as long as the Excelsior. This is the... German, it's brewed in accordance with the right high Shabbat. My only little gripe, my only little annoyance is that it's a German company. They're saying on the back, it, it, it's brewed in accordance with the right high Shabbat in Germany. But if you're a German man, you are not putting your beer in green bottles. You are definitely not putting your beer in green bottles. There's no way. There's no way. You will not find a German brewer that puts his beer in green glass bottles. And this is my only criticism here with Lidl is it, it's a bit of a bugbear. It's a bit of an annoyance. They're a German company. They know their beer. It's clear they know their beer because they have their own variety, variety of beers on the shelf. Yet they choose to put this in green glass bottle. It's probably for the UK market. The, this German supermarket probably thinks that this beer will sell well in the UK if it's in a green glass bottle. Probably the Heineken and Carlsberg influence here. Um, I think they, they should be bold and strong and I think that they should look look at their qualities and, and maybe change it back to a brown bottle. I really don't, but it's always been in a green bottle. As far as I remember, it's always been in a green glass bottle. Anyway, let's get it out. There's the bottle cap. This is a twist off cap, but I don't like damaging my, always find it hurts your hands. <laughs> Says the ex carpenter that had hands of leather once upon a time. And would have had no problem at all <laughs> opening a screw top cap. Right. Good carbonation. Looks pretty good actually. Kind of a slightly deeper, slightly more kind of like amber in the colour compared to the two, the Italian lagers over there. This is slightly deeper in colour. Ah, put them side by side. There's not much in it, but it's definitely, maybe it's just a bit clearer. A little bit of haze there in the fake Moretti. It's got a lovely head on it, two fingers. Half arm distance, I spent 30 seconds talking about skunkiness. I can smell no skunkiness and I can smell no skunkiness at all when I poured the beer. So perhaps then, that they've worked quite hard on using those. They have something, some of the bottles are UV. UV rated so it doesn't get affected by the light. Amazing the lengths that they go to. Just stick it in a brown bottle for goodness sake. But fair play, no skunkiness whatsoever here. 
Smells okay. Hoppy. Light malts. Let's dive in. Cheers, everyone. Nice balance to it. Oh, that's good. You can be as critical as you want as, uh, about green glass. It's a big bug beer for me, but if the beer's fine, this beer is, it, oh, that's, that's good. That's really good. I've got a battle on my hands here now because that's as good as their fake Moretti. That's as good as their fake Moretti. It really is. Oh, wow. That is good lager, really, really good lager. For £1.49, that's as good as you're gonna get. I would drink this over any overly advertised television lager. Your Stellas, your Cronenbergs, overly advertised, all brewed in the UK, terrible quality beers. I would quite happily go to Lidl and buy this. You can buy it by the 12 bottle if you want to. If you're worried about the green glass bottle, you can always buy it in four cans as well. You can buy four cans of the Pearl and Backer. That's a really good quality lager. Soft, fluffy, refreshing, nicely carbonated, biscuit malts coming through, lovely hop finish to it. Wow, wow. I was concerned for a while there, I really was. I was concerned because just the other day, literally two days ago, I stood in this very same spot and I did the very same thing with the Aldi lagers. And to be fair, the Aldi lagers, there wasn't much wrong with those. They were pretty good. If you haven't seen the video, take a look at the Aldi, um, Aldi's version of their own brand lagers. Um, take a look at that because they were pretty good. I mean, if, coming to the end of this now, comparing the two German supermarkets, if you ask me, say I've got 40 people coming round for a 40th birthday party. And, you know, I want to get some lagers in for people, but I want to keep the cost down. Do I go to Lidl? Do I go to Aldi? I reckon I'd be going to Aldi. I reckon I'd be going to Aldi because I wasn't finding so many holes in the Aldi own brand lager they were all the same price they were all these these they did the same Moretti's Peroni's fakes they were all £1.49 um but they were just a little bit better in terms of quality they really were um the Moretti from Lidl very good very very good the Pearl and Backer pills very good from Lidl very very good but the rest, hmm, yeah, um, the rest, I suppose, if I go back now, no, it's finding it, isn't it? No, it's finding it. Let me, re they're all over the shop, yeah, so I'm not going to try and, I think that was the Excelsior. It was, yeah, the, the French lag was darker, wasn't it? See, that, that's still okay. After drinking the Pearl and Backer Premium Pilsner, the Excelsior for £2.79 is still okay. For the money, for the money, that's an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 for the money. Um, I wouldn't buy the French Lager again. In fact, I don't know what I'm going to do with those bottles. Um, they might slide towards the back of the cupboard and 
never see the light of day again. One of those sort of, and then I go, oh, five years time, oh, there's some old beer there, I'll check it out. It might end up doing that. Um, so the French lager was poor, four out of 10, really poor. Uh, then the uh, Galaroo, the Galaroo was okay. Yeah, okay, kind of like a little bit musty, a little bit like UK brewed Stella, which is supposed to be like, I suppose, uh, six out of ten, six out of ten for the Galaroo. Uh, moving on then, and then this was a shocker, wasn't it? And I'll be able to, the beer at Tani and the, and the beer beyond, I'll be able to work it out on the nose. I'll be able to tell you which one was the uh, Peroni fake straight away here. Yeah, this one. Oh. Yeah, this one, definitely. Hmm. Uh, the the Peroni fake is quite, it's still quite, even though it's had time to settle down a little bit in the glass, the carbonation's gone a little bit smaller, it's calmed down a bit in the glass, but it's still skunky, it's still quite metallic. For £1.49, I wouldn't buy that again, um, although it tasted better than Peroni when I battled it off against one another. Shows you how good Peroni is. Um, that's a, I'm going to say that's a 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10. It's going to appeal to some people, see. I, it's not for me, I won't buy it again. But there's some people that, they're used to the taste of Peroni and they'll buy that. And it'll taste better than Peroni. So I've got to give it a 5 out of 10. Um, the fake Moretti, Bira, Beyonder. This is where things get really interesting because this is good. And compared to the compared to the Pearl and Backer. Let's do a proper side by side. Moret, uh, fake Moretti. Pearl and Backer. German pills, definitely. This is more softer. The Moretti, the fake Moretti is a little bit softer, a little bit more malty, very drinkable, nice and hoppy. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'd give that an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 for their fake Moretti. Uh, but I think the winner, for me, on a personal level, the Pearl and Backer Pills, even though I started off saying shouldn't be in a glass bottle, a green glass bottle, should I say. Um, it's just got that kind of lovely Pilsner edge that I like. It's that kind of little bit more hoppy. Not much. Not much. But a little bit more of a hoppiness coming through. It's a little bit cleaner. That hoppy kind of taste makes it cleaner. Um, yeah, the Pearl and Backer wins for me. £1.49 a bottle. There's a reason. There's a reason why Excelsior has been on the shelves of Lidl for the best part of 23 years. Possibly longer. There's a reason why the Pearl and Backer pills is Lidl's premium pilsner that's been on the shelves as long as I can remember. That's because they're good staple beers. People generally spread the word. You'll never see a television advert. You'll see a television advert for Little advertising all of their food, but you'll never see a television advert advertising Perlenbacher or Excelsior. Even though it probably deserves a television advert because it's probably one of the best cheap beers in the UK that you can buy. Little rely on spreading of the word. 
people telling other people, people like me making videos about Pearl and Bagger being such a great beer. Little rely on that. Word of mouth. To, it's a, like a little bit of like a, um, what do they call it? Like an underground scene. An underground scene where people in the know, people in the know understand that's a pretty decent beer for the money. My one gripe, it's in a green glass bottle, but I'm still going to give it a Stone the Crows 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 from Milo Craft Beer. So, we've done side by side. We haven't done side by side actually. That could be a really incredible video, couldn't it? Maybe that's to come. Because I got loads of this French stuff and loads of the Galaroo. I might do I might do a little versus Aldi ladder battle in the near future. But uh, yeah, I hope you liked the video. I hope it's been informative and you can make your decisions off the back of it. My decision is that if they don't have any Pearl and Backer, I'll be buying the fake Moretti. And if they don't have any of the fake Moretti, I'll be buying the Pearl and Backer. Thanks for watching. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beard and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.